Where were you when the assassination happened? Actually, I was a freshman in high school, and it was the Friday before Thanksgiving, so they were having a convocation. So the whole school was uh, in the gym, and uh, there was some rustling of the teachers. You know, they were to tell something was going on, and then they, they told us then that uh, the president had been assassinated. Did you see this coming? Well, there were uh, the actual shooting of the president you didn't see coming, but things were really in a turmoil at that time. Uh, the Bay of Pigs and, and uh, kids our age were really worried about uh, what was going on in the world, so still we were shocked. You didn't really see that coming. Okay, what was the mood after it happened? Oh, it was uh, just a lot of tears and just people who were just uh, beside themselves uh, worrying what was going to happen next, you know, because uh, they really didn't know, you know, how this happened or why this happened, so just a lot of tears and trepidation. Between the time of the assassination and the funeral, what do you remember? You know, there was just a lot of hectic things going on, trying to figure out. Uh, they, you know, they caught Lee Harvey Oswald, and then by that Sunday, everybody was, of course, glued to the TV. It was probably one of the first major events I ever watched on TV. And we were sitting there on a Sunday morning, and they're showing Lee Harvey Oswald. And either they either were taken to jail or moving him to another place. But anyway, out of the clear blue, this guy named Jack Ruby came and, and shot him on live TV, so it was, uh, that was a real shock, and then uh, the thing about uh, when Jack Ruby came from out of nowhere and shot him, it, uh, it, uh, it brought up a lot of questions, you know, that couldn't be answered because the uh, assassin was killed, but then that made you wonder, how did this possibly happen in a jail? A man coming up and shooting the assassin made you wonder about uh, old conspiracy theories. And of course, from that day on, there was conspiracy theories about every aspect of the shooting. This is a diagram produced after the assassination. It shows the route JFK took on his tour. The diagram was created to be an illustration in a book by David Simkin. The author claims that more than one shot was fired on John F. Kennedy. This is the Warren Commission report produced in October of 1964. It explains the events and identifies the assassin as Lee Harvey Oswald. I do trust this document because it is an official government document. William Greer was interviewed by government officials after the assassination. Greer was JFK's limo driver on the day he was killed. The interview was conducted on March 9, 1964. I trust this document because William Greer was present throughout the entire event. Greer claims that three shots were fired and he drove away after the second shot was fired. Were you when the assassination happened? I was in the fourth grade class at school. Um, do you remember what you were doing? We were taking a standardized test, something like your ISEP now. Okay, and who, like, who told you? Did anyone tell you during school? Um, my teacher, her name was Mrs. Day, D-A-Y. She, uh, someone come to the door and told her to turn on the TV. We had TVs in the room, and which was very unusual for back then. They were just ba basically for educational purposes, but they must have been hooked to an antenna because she was able to pick up TV coverage. Oh, okay. We never watched TV, but <laughs> <laughs> it must have been there. To think back on it, you know, I thought, just thinking about that one day when I got older, like, oh, we could have watched cartoons or something if we wanted. <laughs>
Um, yeah. Okay, and then, like, what did they have you do? Did you just watch it and then continue on with your day? We just, she took, if I remember correctly, I guess this has been many years ago, we just watched it for a, a few minutes. Mm-hmm. And she explained what had happened, and then we shut it off and went back to our test. Because, like I said, it was uh, basically what you guys do I step. It was the standardized test it's on time and everything, so we had to go ahead and finish it. Okay. And um, did it affect you that much? Uh, not really. <laughs> this is terrible. Of course, I was nine years old. The only thing I remember is everything, that's all that was on TV. You did nothing else was on mm-hmm. TV for the next three or four days. So after his funeral and everything. And I just remember we couldn't watch our regular shows. They weren't on. Oh, yeah. What I remember the most that we didn't get to watch was Gilligan's Island. <laughs> <sighs> The AARB final report is a government document made to shed some new light on the JFK assassination. The JFK eulogy was a speech spoken by Mike Massafield, a senator. The eulogy discussed the tragedy of his death and the great man everyone will remember. I was at home taking care of my two sons, who were babies. How did you find out about it? I had the news on, or had the TV on, and it was on the news. What were you doing? Just taking care of kids, and when when you're when you are a young mother, why you that's what your job is. Did you see it coming? No, I saw it happen along when they were taking pictures, but uh, there was nobody to see the shooter or anything. You didn't see anything like that. You just saw him fall back into the car, and Jackie fell over him, trying to protect him, I guess. What was it like after? It was pretty sad to think something like that could happen to a president of the United States. You don't think of people shooting someone like that. This is a video of JFK being assassinated in real time. This video was taken by Abraham Zapruder on November 22, 1963. This corroborates with information given in other primary source documents. This is the point of view from a citizen. Lyndon B. Johnson gave a speech on November 27, 1963 in Washington, D.C. concerning the death of JFK. He gave praise to JFK and said that he did not live or die in vain. This document showed the seriousness of the situation and the sadness of the community. This is the newspaper from November 23, 1963, the day after Kennedy was assassinated. This gave the public information about what had happened to their president. The newspaper shows raw emotion from American citizens. Okay, where were you when the assassination of JFK occurred? I was in school, um, in class, sixth grade. I don't remember what class it was. Um, but I remember when they told us, everybody was in shock. And um, who like, told you the news? Um, I believe our principal came in and told us. Okay, what were you doing when the assassination happened? I was in class. <laughs> and did you see it coming? No. Um, and like I said, everybody was shocked. And even on the bus ride home, everybody was so quiet. And we were really a 
afraid because we thought our president is dead. What is our country going to do? What was the community like afterwards? Just very solemn. They had any additional information? Well, actually, I um, was able to see on TV live when Lee Harvey Oswald was killed by Jack Ruby. Um, and I think that was probably the first time that it had been, a murder had been shown live on TV. So that was like history making there. And everyone really liked Kennedy. I don't care if you were Democrat or Republican, they liked him. Um, and I think partly because of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Do you know anything about that? Watched the movie. Okay. Well, the Soviet Union was going to bring missiles and plant them on Cuban soil, aimed at the United States. And Kennedy said that he would attack if they didn't turn back. And he showed that he was strong. He was a strong president, and so they turned back, and it was averted. So that was good. Um, I do have something interesting. It's um, called the Curse of Tip Canoe. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. um, Tecumseh was a Shawnee Indian leader, mm -hmm. and um, William Henry Harrison was supposed to draw the treaty with them. Well, when he did, he used questionable tactics, and the United States ended up taking large areas of land from the Indians that made the Indians very mad and started a war. And Tecumseh said that, this was a treaty of Fort Wayne, by the way, Tecumseh said that every year that a president comes into office that ends with a zero, which William Henry Harrison, that was 1840, that they would die in office. And he died in office. Let me see. He died of pneumonia. In 1860, Lincoln was assassinated while he was in office. In 1880, James Garfield was assassinated while he was in office. In 1900, William McKinley was assassinated while he was in office. 1920, Warren G. Harding, he had a heart attack. In 1940, uh, F.D. Roosevelt, um, that's when he became president. He died of a cerebral hemorrhage. In 1960, J.F. Kennedy, became president, and of course he was assassinated. And then in 1980, Ronald Reagan became president. He didn't die in office, but there was an attempt on his life. And John Hinckley, who tried to kill him, was found innocent because of insanity. And he is actually still in prison, but maybe be able to come home on visits because they find out that maybe he's okay. In 2000, George W. Bush, was in Atlanta, Georgia, and someone threw a, a, a grenade that was supposed to go off, but it didn't, so he didn't die. But this curse is every 20 years, because when a president comes into office in a year with a zero in it, then it takes 20 years for that to, to come around again. So that's pretty interesting. Yep. Thank you. You're this is an interview with Kenneth O'Donnell to state what he saw the day JFK was shot. I trust this source because O'Donnell was the assistant to the pre president and he was speaking on what he saw. This source was a news report reporting every event of the day. As soon as the events were happening, they were reporting from the beginning of the day. I trust this source because they were just describing what happened and had no reason to change what had happened that day. This source was an interview by the woman known as the Lady in Red. She was describing what she saw earlier that day. I believe this source is trustworthy because she was, the shooting had just happened earlier that day and she was reporting what she had seen.